Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Level Up podcast, and um, I'm your co-host, Brendan Payne, with Greg Harrelson, my partner. Greg, how are you? I'm doing good, man. This yeah, is our happy, first uh, first recording of, yeah, of happy the new, new year, year huh? and um, you know, big big stuff coming up in 22 or 2022. So I'm excited to to get going on some stuff. And on on that topic, you know, we've been talking a lot about just you know the the fourth quarter. We spent a lot of time planning, and I know we we are coaching agents to to spend their time planning. And in that process, you come up with a lot of different ideas. And yeah. December, you're probably implementing a lot of stuff. And then January comes around. It's like, all right, we got to get back into business and get really doing the things, the core things. So with all the different distractions, all the options, all the different stuff that we could be looking at doing right now, we want to kind of talk about, um, you know, what's what's at the core? What are a few things that as an agent right now, if you've got a bunch of stuff going on around you, what do you have to do every single day? Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a great topic, especially this time of the year, because um, I did a, a little project with um, a, a group of agents where I think it was about 20 of us um, took five subjects and created five ideas around five different subjects, like how to generate more listings at the beginning of the year. And, um, and so if you think of it's a, if it's five subjects, five ideas, that's 25. And then you times that by 20 people, that would be 500, I believe, ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and we did that towards the end of the year. And we created this massive list, right? And then what it all boiled down to is like, okay, we're never going to be able to do all that. So why don't you choose one, two, or we were saying, we were thinking, and I know you'll agree, choose three things out of those 500 things, narrow it down to three things that you'll focus on. Um, so I, I, I love the subject, you know, and I, I love the thought because right now there's a lot of excitement on building your business for the new year. And we have the tendency to want to do a little bit of everything. And I call that going too wide versus mm. going deep. It'll be better to go deep on a few yeah. simple activities than it would be to go wide on many activities. That's what the real top producers are doing to get to the next level. So yeah. the, the first one that, um, that has to be uh, considered is lead generation. Now, lead generation is more of a subject. So there's all kinds of ways of doing lead generation. But right now, there's not a lot of expireds in most markets, but there's mm -hmm. four sub owners. So the people in your market, the agents that are saying, oh, there's no expireds. Well, if you look at the last 90 days, there probably were 100 expireds in the last 90 days. So there are expireds. You just, you just don't be fooled because there's only one or two on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Because over a 90-day period of time, there's plenty of them. There's plenty of four sub owners. And then you have your centers of influence. So I would just focus on one of my three things would be lead generation. And under lead generation, I'd be focusing on past clients, centers of influence, FISBOs, and old expireds. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things too, I think that... Um... You know, you may not be an agent that is focusing entirely on listings and or, or maybe you, you're doing some listings, but lead generation really is on the buyer side. You know, leads come to buyers, buyer leads come in a little bit differently. They raise their hand and they come in to us. But same thing, if you're working primarily buyers or you want some buyers to be part of your business, then lead generation um, has to happen. You have to make those contacts to um, those attempts to the new people that you haven't talked with. Because yeah. that's 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 who they are. They're a contact. It's your job to get in contact with them and find out whether it is a lead. Yeah, I'll give a, a, a what I call a, a master tip is um, not that I'm the master, but I just think that it's just not talked about. And that is if you're a buyer's agent or you predominantly work with buyers, there's a lot of confusion. Uh, when we talk around lead generation and buyer agents, like buyer agents don't know who to call, right? Because usually the buyer business comes to them versus listing agents have to go to it. But if you think about for sub owners in your market, there are a certain amount of for sub owners. They're, they're all sellers. Yeah. But most for sub owners are actually buyers also. Right. 
And what, what I found fascinating is four sub owners try to sell on their own, but all four sub owners use a, an, an agent to help them buy. Right. So why don't you actually call four sub owners instead of going for the listing, tell them you would actually like to help them on the purchase and start talking to, to them about what they're looking for. Show them properties. After you actually show them properties, guess what they're probably going to want you to do. Yeah, they're going to probably want you to list their property too. There's two transactions. Yeah. Yeah. And and you're coming in from, you know, you're coming in from a place of helping them with something that they already know they want help with. Uh, Can I have your listing? So. That's right. That's yeah, right. And, and, and the rapport, the rapport you'll build with a force of owner by working with them as a buyer will be through the roof because buyers buy off emotion, sellers sell off logic. So you're involved on the emotional side of the transaction mm-hmm. that they're actually conducting. <clears throat> and that's where you can actually really befriend them and have uh, and generate a lot of rapport. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So there's one lead generation. Second yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. So the, the other one that, um, that we talked about was, um, follow up, you know, so you're going to be, hopefully you didn't stop generating in um, the last three, four weeks of the year and that you're kind of in warp speed right now as the new year begins. So you should be doing a lot of generation, which is mean you're, you're, means you're going to come up with a lot of people that you have to follow up with. And then you're going to have to have a system in place for that because it's, you know, they, they build on each other and the more contacts you make, the more leads you generate, the more follow-up you have to have. And then all of a sudden you get in this space where you're kind of overwhelmed. So in the first few weeks of the year and they're thinking, well, yeah, maybe I will. You can't wait until March to follow up with them when they say, I'm thinking about selling in the spring. Because between now and then, they're going to make a move. When they say, I'm thinking about it, like there's nothing stopping them from doing it very quickly. Um, as long as you're the you're there and you're in front of them because the... Um, that that time from lead to listing is is short in the first quarter because they've spent the last couple of months just kind of preparing and planning and um, so now when you hear it you've got to you've got to get in touch with them and uh, make sure you're in position to to be there when they're ready to make the move yeah i agree with all that and um the other thing you know we've been talking about follow-up since since you got into business since i got into business um, that it's it's just one of those areas where there's more there's more revenue loss because of poor lead follow up than probably because of poor lead generation. It, it's yeah. not significant to our businesses, um, but it's it's getting tougher now. Like if you if you don't follow up faster and more frequently, you got no chance. I mean, before mm-hmm. it was just like, hey, we need to follow up, we need to stay in touch. Now it's like. Um, we, if we don't stay in touch with them more frequently, there's so much noise in the industry. There's so many people like paying money on social media or, or YouTube to advertise, to get their intention, uh, attention. Mm. So it, it's, it's a, it's a lot, there's a lot of competition for attention right now. And the way that you're going to win their attention is going to be by being in front of them more frequently. And it's better to be more in front of them by calling them or texting them than it is by just doing social media ads. Now that there's nothing wrong with social media ads, but that's marketing. That's not follow-up. Yeah. After you're following up with somebody multiple times, the question becomes, well, what, what do I say? What am I, what am I, you know, I just keep asking them to list. No, you you have to have it. I think at the front of your mind has got to be, I have to add value because whether that's value in your expertise, whether that's value for listening, value for helping them understand that they can reach their goals sooner, um, value for what it looks like if they didn't list sooner, all those are, they're a huge part of the follow-up conversation. It's not just, hey, are you ready yet? Because that's, you know, there's probably dozens of people in one way, shape or form, like you said, either calling, emailing on a billboard on a Facebook ad that are really following up with them. Basically just saying, I'm here if you want a list. And that's when, when you're picking up the phone and just saying, are you, Hey, are you ready to list yet? Are you you ready ready to list yet? Are you ready to go? That's the same thing as all the passive stuff that everybody else is getting. So you have to find a way to add value. And then when you talk about like for sale by owners and um, expireds, it's always, you know, being able to create that doubt of, like you're going to be able to do this on your own when you're following up week after week 
you're asking questions like, well, what else are you going to do? Because you've been doing this now. You have, you said you weren't doing anything new over the next couple of weeks. What's up next? And they're going, yeah, you're right. I don't really have a whole lot in my, in my pocket to be able to start doing differently. Maybe this guy's got an opportunity. Yeah. You know, you just brought up something that I haven't heard before and my mind is spinning on it. And that is follow-up has always been about, well, we want to stay top of mind, yeah. right? That's been, and, and, and what you just described was all these things that people do to stay top of mind, but now we got to take it to the next level. It's staying top of mind, but top of mind, not by, because they just see us, you know, oh, they saw me again. They saw me again. They saw my name again. Yeah. Top of mind as we are the ones that have a solution to, I, I, for a lack of better words, solution to their problem. They want right. to go from here to there and they need someone to provide some guidance and we are the solution. So it's top of mind based on, you know, our name, but it's also top of mind because you're the one that has the solution. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. What was the third one, Brendan? We talked about it, the, the third one and then, and I've been so focused on generation and follow-up that I forgot what the third one was. Yeah, the third we one is, um, and, and I think this, I don't think there's any way that this doesn't include, and that's skill training. Oh, so yeah, that's right. re that's regardless right. of the time that, um, that you've been in the business, we've talked about before when a market's like this and it's an extreme market, it's an extreme seller's market, it's an extreme buyer's market. In those times, the conversations are changing constantly. So you have to be working on your skills on a daily basis. And, you know, the, the best performers, the, the, the best um, communicators in this business, I have observed them hit a new conversation, like something comes up in the market that changes. They're like, oh, that's interesting. I haven't talked about that with people before. That's an interesting comment somebody made. And right then when that calls over, if for some reason, they didn't have the perfect response for that. Then they stop and they think about it and they go, all right, here's how I'm going to handle that. How would the, what's the consumer thinking when they say that? What's my response? And now how do I ask the next question to get them in the, in the right way? So, so I really can get my point across in this. They stop and they do that immediately. So they don't hit the same objection conversation um, they don't hit that same roadblock and then lose ground again. One time it kind of throws them off and they're like, okay, I'm going to perfect that one and move on. And that's, that's the best of the best. So if you're not to that point yet, work on the skills every single day. One skill that that's on my mind, and I'm going to work with my agents more on this is that I think is, is not focused on enough is the skill of communicating your value. Mm -hmm. um, the, the consumer right now in a good market kind of thinks that all agents can do the job. And, and quite frankly, there's uh, uh, just about any, any agent could list a property. And if mm -hmm. it's relatively close to the price range, it could even be overpriced. Most agents uh, could uh, list the property and get it sold. Like, so the agent has, you know, there's one thing that they, the assumption that they make, well, anyone can sell it right now. And that's why they're, they're so aggressive on us uh, with our commissions, because they think like all agents are equal right now. So it's really important for you to kind of really um, think about what is your value? Like, why, why should somebody hire you? What, what, what differentiates you from somebody else? And yeah. I want you to think about it. Then I would say, write it down. And then I would say, read it. And then I would say, speak it and record it. And then rewrite it, read it, speak it and record it, rewrite it, read it, speak it, and record it. You know, yes, you need to know your list and presentation. Yes, you need to know objection handlers. What I would um, like to, to say um, to the audience is, hey, look, we do have a coaching program called the Agent Success Academy. And if you go to agentsuccessacademy.net, success, you could learn more about that. Brendan, you also have a few coaching uh, courses. Um, what was the last course that you built that we uh, we put out there? Um, we've done a couple with, uh, you know, we've got one that's uh, three or four of us with uh, objection handling. And then we've got um, one on um, pricing. Yeah, um, yes. So if they, they check out realestatesalessolutions.com, then you're going to, um, you're going to see the stuff that I've done that everybody else has done. And, um, you know, great way to um, really level up your uh, performance here in the first quarter of 2022.
Yeah, we talk about skill building that uh, the objection handler mastery course that we did. I don't know, there might be 20 videos to that where you and mm -hmm. I and two other great agents are role playing. And then we're talking about why did we say this when we said that? So it's a real deep dive in uh, handling objections. Yep. So I welcome you to check that out. Go to real estate um, sales solutions .com or also check out agent success academy.net and see if those things are something that you'd want to be involved in, with. Well, Brendan, I know they can reach us on Facebook just by yep. direct messaging us. So if you need anything from us, have a questions, just do that. And thank you so much for, uh, for, for doing this with me, Brendan. For sure. We'll talk in the All next right. one. Bye-bye. Right.